Hey, thanks for stopping by. Today, I'd like to talk about the Frenzied Flame. I'm going to offer a very different way of interpreting the Frenzied Flame through its many surprising parallels to Gnostic Christianity. The game might be the most Gnostic piece of mass media since The Matrix, and maybe even more so. Whoa. Gnosticism is a catch-all term for the many alternative varieties of Christianity that flourished in the 1st through 3rd centuries. The term gets its name from Gnosis, which is Greek for directly experienced knowledge. Since they were a heterodox movement, Gnostic beliefs and practices varied dramatically. So what I'm about to offer is just one way to interpret the game through a Gnostic lens. What first piqued my curiosity were the surprising similarities in the origin stories for both religions. If you finish the questline for Hyetta, she tells you an incredibly important piece of lore. All that there is came from the one great. Then came fractures, and births, and souls. But the greater will made a mistake. Torment, despair, affliction, every sin, every curse, every one born of the mistake. And so, what was borrowed must be returned, melted all away with the yellow chaos flame until all is one again. Likewise, many Gnostics believed in the Monad, a divine entity that was also called the Greatness, the One, and the Great Power. The best description of the Monad comes from the Apocryphon of John. He does not receive anything from another, for it would be received on loan. It is he who exists as God and Father of everything, the Invisible One who is above everything, who exists as incorruption, which is in the pure light into which no eye can look. He is the Invisible Spirit, of whom it is not right to think of him as a God or something similar. For he is more than a God, since there is nothing above him, for no one lords it over him. But unlike mainline Christians, the Gnostics didn't believe the Monad created our physical, material world. Instead, the Gnostics blamed creation on a lesser god, the Demiurge. The Demiurge was also sometimes known and depicted as the lion-headed serpent, Yadaboath. As the Gospel of Philip tells us, The world came about through a mistake. For he who created it wanted to create it imperishable and immortal. He fell short of attaining his desire. So in the game, the one great would represent the monad, or the Demiurge is represented by the greater will. Both the followers of the Frenzied Flame and the Gnostics attack their creator deity because they created the world. That's quite the contrast to most religions, which view creation as either positive or neutral. And the connections go even deeper between these two traditions. The Gnostics and the Frenzied Flame both pride themselves on access to a secret hidden knowledge. There's also the fact that seeking a faint distant light is a common motif for both the Gnostics and Hyetta. The Gnostics believe that the Monad constantly emitted a pure divine light. But since humanity is trapped in a flesh prison built by the Demiurge, only faint traces of that light can be glimpsed. Likewise, Hyatta laments that The distant light is far and frail, so faint it can't be seen by the naked eye. I'll also point out that she is called Lightseeker Hyatta before she becomes a finger maiden. On that note, in both Elden Ring and Gnosticism, blindness is a necessary step to see the truth. It's only after you melt away her eyes that Hyetta can tell us what she learned from the Three Fingers. And in the Dialogue of the Savior, Jesus tells Matthew that he will not be able to see the true light of the monad as long as you are carrying flesh around. Now, what really grabbed my attention and persuaded me to make this video was how some Gnostics described the end times. The concept of our great power, for instance, describes the cleansing of the souls. Just before the world is consumed in flames, the devout will enter into the immeasurable light. When the fire has consumed them all, and when it does not find anything else to burn, then it will perish by its own hand. Ultimately, all souls will be purified, letting them join the incomprehensible unity. Returning to an incomprehensible unity through fire should immediately bring to mind Shabriri's command to incinerate all that divides and distinguishes. Punishing the wicked with fire, 
parallels the heartbreaking demand for justice by Kale for the nomadic merchants buried under Lane Dell. In case you didn't see, Sekiro Dubi recreated a cut questline for Kale, where he discovers what happened to the Great Caravan, and thanks to Stratic for also extracting the voice files. Did you see what they did to my ancestors? The whole clan buried alive, sick, maddened, husks of themselves. Have you heard their moans? They're hardly human anymore. They think we worship the Three Fingers, that we called the maddening sickness down upon them. Well, if that's what they expect from us, then that's what they shall get from us! The world of Grace and his people should have been content to see us sink between the cracks, but to have intruded upon our solace, having broken us upon their whims? I see. I see how it is. You are one of them all along, trying to trample us underfoot, you grace-given bastard. I'll never forgive your kind. Wait, what's that? You've inherited the flame of frenzy. Oh, that's it. That's what I need to melt away the curses, suffering, and despair, and the order entire. May chaos take the world. May chaos take the world. Seeing Kale rage against the genocide of his people, you're left to wonder, should we even try to save the Lands Between? Or is it too far gone? Some Gnostics would argue that of course this world can't be saved. It was, after all, created by an evil god. If the greater will is the Demiurge, this would mean the Lands Between is a prison that ultimately must be escaped or destroyed. In this view, the Frenzied Flame would be the only good ending. Now, this Gnostic interpretation and defense of the Frenzied Flame heavily depends on how you view Hyatt's speech about the One Great. On one finger, there's been a long tradition of viewing Mania as a form of divine revelation that can uncover hidden knowledge. For instance, in Plato's Phaedrus, Socrates famously called madness a divine gift and the source of the chiefest blessings granted to men. Meanwhile, several Gnostic texts were received as revelations, or apocalypsis in ancient Greek. But on the other finger, it's incredibly easy to dismiss Hyera as a source. After she speaks on behalf of a power that wants you to incinerate the entire world, she literally goes mad. And this is the only mention in the entire game of the One Great. So there just isn't any other evidence that backs up what Hyeda tells us. That's a nice argument, Hyeda. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is... May chaos take... The world! The fact that the Frenzied Flame is linked with madness also echoes some of the fiercest attacks by mainline Christians on the Gnostics. The best example would be the appropriately named Against Heresies by Irenaeus. Irenaeus's polemic, as one-sided as it was, was also the best account of Gnostic writing until a treasure trove of texts was discovered in Nag Hammadi, Egypt in 1945. According to Irenaeus, he wrote his polemic so that Gnostics could avoid such an abyss of madness and of blasphemy against Christ, so unbridled in their madness that they declare they have in their power all things which are irreligious and impious, and are at liberty to practice them, for they maintain that things are evil or good simply in virtue of human opinion. These men falsify the oracles of God and prove themselves evil interpreters of the good word of revelation. They overthrow the faith of many, by drawing them away, under a pretense of superior knowledge, from him who rounded and adorned the universe. By means of specious and plausible words, they cunningly allure the simple-minded to inquire into their system. But they nevertheless clumsily destroy them. At the end of the day, who do you trust more, the orthodoxy or the heresy? I would also like to address two common defenses of the Frenzied Flame. The first argument goes that while the flame would burn away the current world, this would also allow something new and probably better to grow. But there just isn't any renewal with the frenzied flame ending. Hyeda, speaking on behalf of the Three Fingers, is adamant that life itself was a mistake. Those who gave me grace 
howled without words, saying they wished they were never born. No more fractures. No more birth. <laughs> so any defense of the frenzied flame ending has to grapple with the fact that this ending is supposed to be apocalyptic. And to its credit, the other common defense I've seen fully accepts that. In this view, the frenzied flame ending would avenge all the groups tormented and oppressed by the Golden Order, with justice for the nomadic merchants front and center. Although the cut quest for Kale offers a much more compelling motivation for the frenzied flame, I still think it falls short. Incinerating the entire lands between would inflict enormous amounts of collateral damage, killing so many innocent people, which would be way worse than anything Merica and her Golden Order ever did. In addition, no matter what ending you choose, you always defeat those who fought in the name of the Golden Order, like Godfrey and Radagon. As for Merica herself, she dies in both the Age of Stars ending and the Frenzied Flame, though her state is left ambiguous when you mend the Elden Ring. Before I wrap up, I would also like to give a shout out to Ratatosker and Mad Luigi, who did fantastic philosophical interpretations of the Frenzied Flame, which inspired me to do my own version. Now you might have noticed I didn't talk at all about Melina and how she plays into the Frenzied Flame. Well, that's because I already did an entire lore video about Melina and the Glomite Queen. Thank you so much for watching. I've just barely scratched the surface to all the different Gnostic symbols and elements that are present in the game. I would love to hear what Yins have to say.